the American justice system has gone awry. Prison telephone service is a civil rights issue. We lead the world in imprisoned citizens. 2.5 million Americans in federal and state prisons and jails today. Two million citizens behind prison walls. The world's leading democracy with the world's largest prison population. And that population is overwhelmingly black, brown, and poor. For instance, the population of Georgia is 29% black, prison population 64%. Mississippi, 30% black, prison 76%. Pennsylvania, 10% black, prison population, 56%. Ratios similar across 50 states. These primarily young black and brown Americans are ripped from familiar surroundings and isolated from loved ones. If they return to society as productive citizens, they need the support of those who care about them. They need to communicate with those who love them. Their prison phone systems have been designed to exploit prisoners and their families. This is not an accident, it didn't just happen. It's a system designed to prey on one of our most vulnerable populations. Prison phone service is a civil rights issue, a moral issue, it's about how we respond to the least of these. Visits to incarcerated family members are difficult for the poor. Transportation and accommodation. Visits are an economic burden. The phone becomes the only way to maintain communication. Mothers and fathers with, with their children wives and husbands, brothers and sisters. And so they recognize the important role telephone service plays in shaping the inmates' lives, the role it plays in maintaining the few supportive relationships many inmates have. Prison administrators and state legislators view it as a revenue source. And the folks paying are those who can least afford it. Prisoners cannot choose their carrier. In many cases, telephone companies bid for the right to provide service to a prison and the company offering the best deal for the prison, not the prisoners. It's corrupt. They get the contract. Phone services become a, a proper center for the prison, and the families and, and friends of prisoners pay the burdensome bill. In this day of pennies, a minute phone rates, and unlimited long distance plans, families can pay a connection charge of $3 or more plus per minute, rates approaching $1 making a 15-minute collect call anywhere from $10 to $17 or more. A weekly one-hour call can cost families up to $300 a month. These rates are predatory. The families are already struggling to make ends meet. This is an unconscionable burden. Imagine having to choose between putting food on the table, accepting a call from a, high, a family member in prison, a choice no family should have to make. For 10 years now, the FCC has ignored police to fix the situation. Martha Wright, an elderly woman who had to choose between paying for medicine, calling her grandson in prison, petitioned the FCC to solve this problem almost a decade ago. These high rates cannot be justified. Eight states and the Federal Communication and Federal Bureau of Prisons have already made some changes. The men and women in our prisons need supportive networks when they are released, and that must happen. We must maintain communications with loved ones while they're incarcerated. The FCC must put an end to this madness. 